we're going to continue um, for one. On Friday, we talked about um, like the angles formed by our our quadrants or our X and Y axis. So, because we'll build on this today. These are all in terms of radians. If I went from zero at the start, so I start over here on the right-hand side, this would be zero radians. And my full circle all the way around would be two pi because this would be a circle formed with a radius of one. And we know cir the circumference is the measurement all the way around. If, if the R is one, then my circumference is two pi. Then we said halfway would be half of that two pi, which would be pi. At the top, it would be halfway between zero and pi, which would be pi over two or one half pi. And at the bottom would be halfway between one pi and two pi, which would be one and one half pi or three pi over two. So we just kind of lightly touched on that today. We're definitely gonna fill in the rest of it. But that's the idea behind our full quadrant angles. Then we said those angles could go positive and negative. And we talked about coterminal angles. Remember coterminal angles are two angles, or, or not two angles, but angles that have the same start or initial side and the same terminal side. So if I said two pi, for example, zero and two pi would be coterminal angles because they have both the same start and the same terminal. If I went around my circle one more time, I'd end up at four pi. Those, so th that would also be coterminal. And we learned that if we have the measure of an angle in radians to find the coterminals, we add and subtract two pi. And then we did that, that example. We talked about positive and negative angles. If I go counterclockwise, these are positive angles. If I go negative, then I'm going clockwise. So today we're going to learn about all those special angles. We're going to do it in degrees and in radians. But in degrees where zero radians is, it would be zero degrees. At the top, it'd form a right angle. It would be 90 degrees where pi over 2 is. On the left would be pi or 180 degrees because that's a straight line. At the bottom, one and one half pi or 270 degrees. And then it would double back around to 360 degrees and two pi. And then again, today we're gonna learn how to fill in all those little angles in between. It is completely reversed the other way around. If I go negative, then negative 90 is at the bottom, negative 180 is still on the left, negative 270 is at the top, and this would be negative 360 if we went all the way back around. Okay, so if I'm in degrees, think about the conversion here, right? If one full circle is two pi in degrees, that's 360 degrees because one full circle is 360 degrees. If I want to find a coterminal angle in degrees, I just add and subtract 360 degrees. So if I want to convert from degrees to radians is the first one. I'm going to take that angle measure and I'm going to multiply it times pi over 180. And if I want to convert from radians to degrees, I'm going to take that angle measure and I'm going to multiply it times 180 over pi. Most of the time, radians will have pi in their answer, but it doesn't have to. It could simply say, convert 2.5 radians to degrees. And you would still do the same process. You would still multiply times pi over 180. but more often than not, your radians will have pi in it. All right, now let's talk about something called degree minute second notation. So if you have your calculators with you, if you'll take it out. Degree minute second notation is a way to get a like more precise measure of an angle. Okay, if you could think of it in terms of a clock, you've got your hour, which would be like the full circle all the way around your clock. And then you've got your minutes, which are all your little tick marks on your clock. And then you've got your seconds, which are even smaller. You don't see them, but they would be all the seconds in between all those minutes, right? So the degree could line up with the degree on a clock. So if it's at like 31 and I had a full clock, I'm talking 31 degrees. So 31 degrees is going to be a little bit less than halfway here. This could be like 31 degrees, okay? And then 47 over 60 would represent your minutes here, and 12 over 3,600 would represent your seconds here. 
All this means is I'm getting like a little tiny bit more than that 31 degrees, okay? It's, you don't ever have to graph it in degree minute second notation, but what we do have to do is understand how to get from degree minute second notation, which looks like this, to decimal degree or vice versa. So I'm gonna teach you how to do it. Again, you need your graphing calculator. Most scientific calculators will also do this, maybe in a slightly different way, but I'm gonna teach you how to do it with your graphing utility. So I'm gonna go from 31 degrees, 47, one single tick mark means minute, and 12 double tick mark means seconds, okay? Let me change the settings. Okay. Okay, above our apps menu is a little button that says angle, and most of what we're about to do lives there, okay? So if I want to convert from 31 minutes, 47 seconds, no, 31 degrees, 47 minutes, and 12 seconds, I first type 31 because that's my degree, and then I'm going to go to second apps, which brings me to that angle menu, and the degree is right there at the top. I hit enter, so that's 31 degrees. Then I go 47 and I go back to that same menu, second, apps, and the single tick mark is number two, right underneath it. I hit that button. And then I'm sure you're thinking, well, the double tick mark must also be in the same menu because that would make a lot of sense, but it's not. Somebody got drunk and put it here above the plus symbol. So now we do 12 alpha plus to get our double tick marks, okay? So they are not in the same menu. Don't ask me why, I don't know, but that's where it is, okay? And then we hit enter and it will convert it to what's called decimal degree. So one is DMS or degree minute second and the other one is called decimal degree. Everybody practice that, yes? Okay. Now let's say I wanna go back the other way. I would take my 30, I'm gonna do 31.787 because that's how they have it rounded. And to go back to degree minute second notation, I go back to the menu that makes sense, second, apps and number four is arrow dms so i go there i hit enter and i hit enter again and it's going to take you to your degree minute second notation now it's not exact right it didn't exactly go back to what we did because we rounded it if i had done that up here if i had taken this answer and done arrow dms it would be closer because it kept more of that decimal okay but the one they gave you was rounded, so I don't expect it to be exact. So if I wanted to give that second answer, I would include the 13.2. So that would be 31 degrees, 47 minutes, 13.2 seconds. Good so far? Okay. Without your calculator, like if you didn't have a calculator that did that, there's this long process to do it. Okay, and it is this, just in case you ever get stuck, you know, and you're like uh, trying to do your homework on your phone. It doesn't have degree minute second notation. If I wanted to convert from here, from, or from degree minute second notation to decimal degree, then I would leave my 31 as is. And then I would take the minutes, which is 47, and I would, well, I don't need the degree symbol on it anymore. It goes at the end, sorry. And I would add 47 over the number of minutes in an hour, which is 60. And then I would take the 12, which is seconds, and I would put it over the number of seconds in an hour, which is 3,600. And then you just add it all together at the end, you would still get that 31.787. The good news is your calculator does that work for you. But again, if you have like just um, a four function or you have an older scientific one that doesn't have those buttons, then that's your other option. Question so far? Okay. Example three says convert the angle from radians to degrees or vice versa. And I've got A, B, C, D. Okay, so it doesn't say just specifically one way. How do I know if it's in degrees or if it's in radians? Say again. 
So it doesn't have to have a pi symbol. It could also say 2.5 and that's radians. How do you know for sure? There has to be a degree symbol on your degrees. If there is no degree symbol, it's in radians or it's a typo when you raise your hand and you let me know, okay? But if it said 2.5, for example, without a degree symbol, that's radians, okay? So it doesn't have to have a pi in order to be radians, but it does have to have a degree symbol in order to be degrees. So I'm gonna take that 30, I'm gonna multiply this times pi over 180. I can cross out my zeros and three goes into 18 six times. This becomes pi over six and that's one of our special angles. I'm gonna go to C and then I'll go to the other. I go to C, 160 degrees times pi over 180. I cross through the zeros. I have 16 and 18. This would be eight and nine and I get eight pi over nine. And then I go to B. Now it's in radians, so I'm gonna multiply times 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. Two goes into 80, 180 90 times, and this answer is 90. Make sure you put the degree symbol on it. And D, multiply times 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. 4 and 180, like I could go into 2, this would be 2 and 90, and then 1 and 45. And then I get 3 times 45, which is 135. Question on those. All right, complement and supplement are next. So two words, hopefully we know from geometry, okay? The complement to an angle is what I would have to add to get it to be 90 degrees. So two complementary angles are angles that sum to 90 degrees. Complementary, 90 degrees. Two angles that are supplementary add up to 180 degrees. Now think about this in terms of radians, right? So if I wanted to find it in degrees, uh, for a complement, I would just do 90 minus an angle is gonna give me the complement. If I wanted to do supplement in degrees, 180 minus that angle is gonna give me the supplement. If I'm in radians, then the conversion of 90 degrees becomes pi over two. So I would do pi over two minus the angle. And the conversion of 180 is pi. So I do pi minus the angle. Now, what you could do is like literally convert your radian to degrees, subtract it, but then you have to convert it back. So I would say just get to know your pi over 2 and your pi. You're going to need to know those anyways. So pi on 180, pi over 2, 90 degrees. And then super important at the bottom, both complements and supplements should be positive angles. So if my angle is so big that it doesn't have a complement or its complement would be negative, then I just write no complement. So if I asked you what the complement to 110 was, you would say there is none. And if it's bigger than 180, it doesn't have a supplement. If it was 200 degrees, there is no supplement. We don't write a negative angle. We write no. No complement, no supplement. All right, so example four. Find, if possible, the complement and the supplement to each angle. So go to A. If I wanted to find the complement, let's say you don't catch it. If you want to find the complement, you're going to do pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 4. you got to give it a like denominator. It becomes 2 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4, and I end up with a negative angle. Doesn't work. There is no complement. But you can save yourself some time and check from the beginning. Is 3 over 2 bigger than a half? It is. If it's bigger than a half, then it can't have a complement. Then I go to B, find its supplement, and that's pi minus 3 pi over 4. So I would do 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4, or pi over 4. And then I do it in degrees. So 82, my complement would be 90 minus 82, which is 8 degrees. And my supplement would be 180 minus 82 which would be 98 degrees. 
If your answer is given to you in degrees, it needs to be answered in degrees. If your answer, if your question is given to you in radians, it needs to be answered in radians. Still good? Yes? Questions? All right, the last thing in this section, again, we're going to add on the unit circle, but I'm actually do that in a separate video. But the last thing in this section is arc length. Now, when you find arc length in geometry, I don't know if you remember this, but you do the measure of the arc over 360 times the circumference or 2 pi r. What's different in what we're about to do is that we take that angle and we put it into radians. So it takes, like, it takes part of this out. We take that degree, I mean, our, our theta, which is our angle, we put it in radians, and then all you have to do is multiply it times its radius. So this would technically be, if I wanted to convert this into radians, I would have the measure of the arc over 360 times pi over 180, and I'd multiply that times my circumference, which is 2 pi r. So instead of doing all that, actually, yeah, yeah. Instead of doing all that, we simplify it. We convert it to radians as it is. And then all you have to do is multiply it times your radius. And that will give you your arc length. I reverse these letters and remember this as SOAR. Feel free if you want to do it. Like I will call it SOAR when we refer to it because it's S-O-R. Okay. But that is the formula you need to know. And it will look like this. Find the length of the arc. Number one, the radius is three and theta is 120. So what did we say theta has to be in? Radians. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that by multiplying by pi over 180. The zeros cancel. Six and nine. Two and three. And I get two pi over three would be theta in radians. And then all I have to do is multiply it times the radius. So two pi over three times 3. And I get the s equals 2 pi. And if it gave me a unit, I'd include it here. Like if it said centimeters here, this would be in centimeters because that would be a length. Now go to 2. Same question, but this time, what do I give you the angle in? Degrees of radians. It's already in radians. So this is theta, and all I have to do is multiply it times the radius. So I get S equals 28 pi over 5 centimeters. And you're going to keep it exact. Don't make that a decimal. Keep it exact. Unless it said something like round to the nearest whatever. And in that case, you'll use the pi button on your... Wait for it. Okay, now we're just going to work in different order. This time they give you different pieces of information. It says find the radius of the circle if you're given the length of the arc and theta. Same formula, S equals theta times the radius. For A, the length of the arc is pi. This is your S. So pi equals theta is 3 pi over 4 times your radius, and you don't know the radius. So you can, you can do this multiple ways. I could multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. I could multiply by 4, get rid of the 4. And then I have 3 pi r equals 4 pi. Then I could divide by 3 pi or I could divide by 3 and then divide by pi. You could do this in a lot of different order. But at the end, I get 4 thirds. And again, it didn't give me a unit. If it was in centimeters or whatever it was, I would include it. But I could also just leave it as 4 thirds or one and one third. If it asks you to round it, 1.3. All right, and then B, now it gives you arc length again in theta. This time it's already in radians. So S equals theta times the radius, 24 pi would equal four pi times R. And I can divide both sides by four pi. The pi's cancel and R would equal six. Questions on anything we talked about either Friday or, or today. So it's a lot of like building blocks. Like you have to know how to convert from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. We will see degree minute second again. 
we're about to see how to start to build our unit circle using those quadrant angles, but that's definitely going to get built upon. And then you've got complement, supplement, and coterminals. We're good. Yes? Okay. Okay.